Today, we will discuss a series of facts related to our sleeping habits as teenagers. Every day, we are supposed to spend about the third part of our sleeping life, mostly during the night. However, we can realize that most people keep habits that do not allow them to enjoy this part of their existence. As a teenager, an individual must learn to respect their sleeping time since its function is to help their brain and the whole organisms recover their, from their everyday activity. Needless to say, any person at this age has a wide variety of activities and interests that sometimes distract them from this necessary uh, body function. We can frequently perceive the effect of our body sleeping habits in our daily routine. Sometimes we feel tired or unwilling to do our school chores because we, are, we have skipped sleeping hours. Or we perceive changes in our mood, such as a such as irritability or apathy as a consequence of the stress caused by sleep deprivation. Situations that turn into a negative cycle of habits that damage our health. Nevertheless, sleeping quality can be improved by following health routines that may help us solve those uncomfortable situations. Learning to manage our bedtime habits is not necessarily a difficult task if we really put effort on it. Furthermore, the benefits of it can be reflected in many everyday moments, such as interaction with our peers, our performance at the school activities, whether they are academic or physical or simply our well-being. Today, I'm very pleased to share our program with, the, with three fellow students from Colegio Vido Chantal. Please allow me to introduce Melissa Torres, Andre Razo, and Alexis Nieto, who will share their point of view about the sleeping habits as a most for healthy life at teenage age. Fellow students, one of the more one of the things that most concern us the most is the erroneous perception that we have over bedtime. You know our habits do not always help us sleep well. In our perception, what's the worst sleeping habit that teenagers have? Well, I, I think sometimes we tend to hit the snooze button in the belief that that would give us some extra time to sleep. But in the reality, that doesn't only affect the way we perform during the day, but it also can affect our sleep cycle because our body thinks that we are going to sleep once more, but in reality, we don't get enough time to complete the full sleep cycle and get to work, and we are not as awake as we should be to perform correctly. That's true. Andre? Well, how about the midnight snacking uh, with some drinks with caffeine? The caffeine is a substance that um, alters the body cycle of sleeping, making it stay awake several hours at night and interrupting the sleeping cycle. Well, with some of these situations, we could drink um, substitutes like tea or drink water or, mi or milk, yes. Melissa? In my opinion, using technology before going to sleep is like the common, the common sleeping habit that we have. Like, we, are, we usually turn on the TV to fall asleep and yeah for example me the I usually try to do social network I watch Netflix 
example, series and movies. And I think that it's the most common and the worst sleeping habit that we have. So, Opinions. What you have just explained to us shows the effects in our lifestyle. Could you tell us what the worst consequences of sleep deprivation are? I think that the worst consequence of sleep deprivation is the bad performance in school, in sports. For example, when you are trying to concentrate or to put attention to the, your teacher, but you are sleeping, so you actually don't do don't think and don't put the attention to what you are doing. So, um, in other also, there's the you could cause tra tragical accidents, like when you are walking to the street in the street and with the cars, you can fall down. And I think the bad performance is one of the consequences. Well, in my opinion, the worst um, the worst consequence is the hysteria. Um, the hysteria can can be caused by the the lack of sleeping hours, and it happens like when you don't sleep um, like two or three days a a week. The hysteria can make love lother and making you laugh at some insignificant s situations, like, I don't know, someone saying something stupid or falling down the street, um, anger or irrit 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 irritability, and making you get angry of some, some situation and feeling blue or sad when you s and listen to a song or maybe a film, a sad film. In my personal case, I don't know any persons with that trastorn or problem, but it can be solved with some help or some sleeping hours. Well, I don't think I agree with that point of view. I believe that only after several days of not sleeping, we can actually damage our perception of how the world is actually around us by hallucinations or by mistaken perception. We can perceive shadows or noises or imagine things that are not really there. And that can be very stressing for us and some people around us. For example, we can believe that we went somewhere, but we actually didn't. Or we are told that we did something, but we don't believe that we actually did. And this is only extreme case that comes after several days of not getting enough, enough sleep. Yeah. Okay. I am, sure, I am sure there are many consequences as the ones you have listed. Now, I am sure that there must be something we can do to improve our sleep ha habits. What do you think is the golden rule to sleep well? Well, I think the golden sleep, sleep r sleeping rule is um, having a dark and silent um, habitation where you can counsel the the sleeping. Um, well, you can have curtains or thick curtains to block the path of light, and that invites you to sleep because the brain thinks that I when you have light, it's day and it uh, avoids you sleeping well. And the noises were, for example, people um, living near or next to some highways or transited ways, well, they, they distract the sleeping cycle and you can't sleep well. And uh, one solution that you can do, it's, well, um, sleep, sleep and distract you. Okay. Of course, that's true, but I think that the golden rule is not spend too long trying to get asleep. Like 20 minutes 
more and more. Uh, for example, I th in the cartoons they said the typical phrase of count ships, but really that doesn't that doesn't yeah. So the ne the ships will never finish, and that's something wrong. So I. I will recommend if you can sleep, you must read a book or do exercise, take a walk or do whatever you like, but relax your body and that will help you to get asleep is easier. Or we can also avoid overeating because our body can also stress to what we eat. For example, here in our country we like eating spicy th things like enchiladas or chilaquiles and that can irritate our stomach process. We should all have light meals like fruit or vegetables because they are easier to our body to process rather than meat. We should also avoid um, ingesting a lot of liquids because, well, we could go to the loo and we should also try to measure what we eat and how we eat it and plan our last meal of the day. Okay. Well, our time is coming to an end. Still, there is one more point that I would like you to share with us. Please uh, give us a piece of, our, of your mind and share some advice based on your personal experience. What is that one thing that you find useful to have a good night's sleep? In my point of view, I really think that meditation, it's a good kind of, of strategy or because you relax your body and you really permit to your body like relax, calm and or you can also remember things that, happy things that happen to you and that will help you to to sleep well. Also, um, I in my experience or in my op example, I pray before going to sleep, so that permits my brain and my spiritual me calm and relax when I'm sleeping. The best way to relax at the end of the day would be to just unwind your mind because our body and our mind as well can be very stressed to what happened during the day, both good and bad things. So we should probably download our diary or just block the worries out of our mind because that can also stress our body and not allow us to have a good night of sleep. Uh, for example, we can avoid postponing events or activities and plan them earlier in time? Well, in my point of view, um, the best golden rule is buying a good mattress for your body and don't get uncomfortable when you are sleeping. But I think that's the personal decision of... Um, that's your personal decision if you would like to sleep in a good mattress or I don't even know in the sofa um, you can um, take the options of sleeping in a good place where it's comfortable um, wearing some good py pajamas and um, eat some uh, light snack before you go to bed okay well, our time is over. Thanks, everybody, for sharing your views with us today. Melissa? Yeah, I really spent a good time here. Thanks. Andre? Yeah, for me, it's a pleasure being here. Alexis? Thank you for having us here. My name is Daniel Gonzalez. Thank you very much. Bien, yo ya me metí acá a la... A la a la toma, si me, si me permiten. Oigan, chavos, de verdad, muchísimas, muchísimas gracias a nombre de esta dirección general, a nombre de, a cargo, mejor dicho, del licenciado Manuel Salgado. Muchas gracias por estar con nosotros. 
eh, se nota que ustedes tienen un, un gran desempeño en el idioma inglés y la verdad es que lo que queremos es felicitarlo. Y también recordarles que este espacio siempre está abierto para ustedes, por favor no nada más, o mejor dicho no esperen a que, a que llegue la invitación de parte de Gest Media o por parte de Gest Media, sino también ustedes acérquense, búsquenos y si quieren presentar algún proyecto de que estén realizando en su colegio, siempre va a estar abierto este espacio para que ustedes hagan difusión de todas las actividades que tienen en su colegio. ¿Les parece bien? Bueno, pues muchas gracias y como es costumbre, eh, siempre hay un espacio para que ustedes envíen saludos o algún agradecimiento que quieran dar y pues hoy no va a ser la excepción. ¿Les parece que comencemos de este lado y terminamos a mi izquierda? ¿Sí? Adelante, por favor. Bueno, pues a mí me gustaría saludar a mi mamá y a mi hermano, así que Diego y Blanca. Adelante. Bueno, a mí me gustaría mandar saludos a mis papás y a mis compañeros del colegio que siempre me acompañan. A mí me gustaría saludar también a mis compañeros, a mi familia y a nuestro profesor que nos está viendo. A mí igual me gustaría agradecer al profesor por darnos esta oportunidad y saludar a todos nuestros compañeros y familiares. Bien, excelente. Oigan, ¿qué les parece si nos agarramos un minutito más? y sus eh, compañeros que estuvieron en radio, también para que tengan una breve participación en televisión, vengan chavos porque la verdad va a estar de maravilla que se lleven este recuerdo de haber estado en este espacio que es de GES Media, adelante por favor porque ya estamos prácticamente despidiéndonos, adelante ahora sí que pasen atrás de mí, por favor y nos dicen eh, su nombre y saludo que quieran ustedes enviar, les voy a pasar este micro y ahorita ya me lo regresan, ¿ma? comenzamos de este lado. Yo le quiero mandar saludos a mis compañeros y a mi familia. Yo también a mi familia y a mis compañeros. Mm, yo le quiero enviar saludos a mis maestros, a mi familia y a todos mis amigos. Yo quiero mandar saludos a mis amigos, a mi familia, a mis maestros que nos dieron esta oportunidad de estar aquí. Entonces, bueno, pues ya conocieron a los alumnos de este colegio que nos visitan esta mañana en DGSTV y, y me gustaría que nos despidiéramos muy fuerte, que, o mejor dicho, nos despidiéramos con un grito muy fuerte del nombre de su colegio, ¿qué les parece? Sí, a la cuenta de tres, ustedes van a contar y ustedes mismos eh, dicen el nombre de su colegio, ¿sale? Adelante. ¿Cómo? Ándale. <risa> Así es, con esto nos despedimos, esto es… Esto es particular a través de DGS TV, recuerda que DGS TV te ve aprendiendo, no me quiero ir sin antes dar un agradecimiento muy especial a los directivos del colegio, muchas gracias a los papás también, a los alumnos que nos visitan esta mañana en este espacio, muchísimas gracias por habernos prestado a sus hijos, por habernos prestado a sus alumnos, a los profesores que los acompañan, muchísimas gracias, recuerden que este espacio siempre va a estar abierto para ustedes. Y a nombre del director general, muchísimas gracias al licenciado Manuel Salgado Cuevas por las facilidades que nos brinda para poder realizar este y todos los programas, tanto en radio como en televisión. A nombre de mis compañeros, yo soy Ricardo Martínez, que tengan un excelente día.